today we'll be taking a look at problem 1.5 from Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, 3rd edition. In this one we consider the wave function psi of x comma t given as there, where we have three different constants, all of them positive and real, and we are asked part a first to normalize the wave function. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started there. To normalize the wave function, we are going to do what we always do when we normalize. And just setting it up right here, we're going to see that if we take the integral from negative infinity to infinity by definition of the wave function psi of xt squared dx and set that equal to 1, that will give us, uh, that will allow us to solve for the normalization constant a right there. All right, so let's actually plug that in. So next line here integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of psi of x t times psi star which is the complex conjugate of x t dx equals 1 all right there we then we have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of that normalization constant a squared e to the negative 2 lambda uh, times absolute value of x. There we go. And then we have e to the negative i omega t, e to the i omega t. So just in the problem here, when we set it up, we see that squaring the wave function essentially just inserts uh, a 2 right there. So that's where we have e to the negative 2 lambda times absolute value of x. And then again, complex conjugate of e to the i omega t is e to, sorry, of e to the negative i omega t is e to the positive i omega t. So we're just flipping the sign there. And what you see there pretty, pretty quickly, pretty simply, is that these two factors here are actually going to cancel each other out. They're, you know, you add negative i omega t to positive i omega t and you get zero. So e to the zero power is one. We're still integrating over x, and that still equals 1. So we see that this is time independent right here. There's no more um, t factor. All right. Now a, the normalization constant, is a constant, so it can go out front. And then as we go ahead and do this integral here, we see that we have the absolute value of x. So really the, the easy and simple way to take care of that is just to go from negative infinity to zero for your first bounds, e to the two lambda, and then all of the x values from negative infinity to zero are negative. And so negative x times negative two is positive. So we have e to the two lambda x positive dx plus integral zero to infinity e to the two lambda x. Now here, all of the values of x from 0 to infinity are positive. So we have positive x coming from the absolute value of x. We have positive x hands, uh, for that side, but we still have that factor of negative 1 there. So negative 2 lambda x would be our power there for the exponential. Still integrating over x, that equals 1. All right, so if we actually solve these integrals, we have a squared for our normalization constant, and then we have e to the 2 lambda x over 2 lambda, evaluated negative infinity to 0, minus e to the negative 2 lambda x over 2 lambda from 0 to infinity equals 1. All right. When you actually plug in those uh, limits of uh, integration there, um, when you actually evaluate that, you have a squared times 1 over 2 lambda minus e to the negative infinity over 2 lambda minus e to the negative infinity over 2 lambda plus 1 over 2 lambda. 
equals one. All right. Well, these are clearly zero. E to the negative infinity is zero, so zero divided by two lambda is zero. That's true for both of those middle terms. And then we're just left with uh, a times, excuse me, a squared, one over two lambda plus one over two lambda is two over two lambda, or just one over lambda. So a squared over lambda equals one. Therefore, our normaliza normalization constant a is equal to the square root of lambda. All right. Thus, psi of x comma t is equal to the square root of lambda times what our, what our initial wave function was up here. Um, just now we have the value for a, and that's all that normalization is. We're just solving for that a term. So uh, we'll write the rest of the wave function e to the negative lambda absolute value of x e to the negative i omega t. So that's our wave function now. Now, one thing that we can note at this point as well is that by Born's interpretation of quantum mechanics, the probability distribution is given as this wave function squared. So if we take uh, psi of x comma t squared, that will equal lambda e to the negative two lambda absolute value of x. And because we're squaring it, the time, depend, uh, the time dependent portion will actually go away, and just as it did up here when we integrated. And so we see that the probability distribution is given right here by this psi squared term, this wave function squared. So that is the probability. And psi squared is the probability distribution. All right. So part B we are asked to determine the expectation values of x and x squared. All right. So for expectation value, this is just um, strictly evaluating an integral by definition. So expectation value of x is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times the wave function psi of xt squared dx. All right. So when we actually do that, uh, we already found uh, uh, the wave function squared in the line above, so we can just plug that in. So we have that that is equal to lambda right there. That lambda as a constant out front, integral negative infinity to infinity of x times e to the negative 2 lambda absolute value of x dx. Now that is actually going to equal zero because the function is odd and we are integrating over symmetric bounds. So because it is odd and we are integrating over symmetric bounds. All right. And I actually have a short animation here, if I can find it, of exactly what's going on here. So I'm going to paste that in. And this is for lambda between 0 and 20. We'll let this animation play out. So you can see that whatever value of lambda have, that's really the only uh, parameter here that's changing from case to case. We can see that the function remains uh, odd. So clearly that integral is going to equal zero for whatever lambda may be. All right. So as we continue on here, uh, we are now asked to find the expectation value of x squared. Okay, well that's also by definition the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared times the wave function squared. So psi of xt squared dx. Okay, so again, we have lambda out front, 
integral from negative infinity to infinity of x squared e to the negative 2 lambda absolute value of x dx. Okay, now this is where we have to say, okay, I have an even function here from that x squared term. And because I have an even function, I can really just take a factor of 2 out front and change my bounds of integration from 0 to infinity because those are going to be, um, or because the problem is symmetric in that way. So x squared e to the negative 2 lambda. Uh, and now we don't have x, absolute value of x. We can just do positive x because we're doing the right-hand side from 0 to infinity and then dx. Okay, so that actually allows us to simplify the problem quite a bit, but we still need to do a substitution to solve for, uh, for this integral. This uh, uh, this can be a little bit messy, but this will be the easiest way to solve. So if we're actually looking at that e to the negative 2 lambda x, the best way to solve this integral is to say, hey, the partial derivative of, uh, with respect to lambda, of e to the negative 2 lambda x is equal to negative 2x e to the negative 2 lambda x. Okay? And therefore, if we do the partial derivative squared of e to the negative 2 lambda x, that is equal to 4x squared e to the negative 2 lambda x. Well, if you see up here, we don't have 4x squared uh, e to the negative 2 lambda x. We just have x squared e to the negative 2 lambda x. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to say, okay, well, that equals uh, 2 lambda. Uh, integral 0 to infinity, and instead we're going to put 1 fourth of that d squared, d lambda squared, e to the negative 2 lambda x. All right, dx. So those two integrals here and here are exactly the same integral we just substituted in um, with this partial derivative with respect to lambda. Okay, and what that allows us to do is we take that one fourth out front and we say, okay, this is lambda over two. And then this integral is just with respect to x. So we can actually take the d squared, d lambda squared out front. That's constant for this integral. Zero to infinity of e to the negative two lambda x. And now we just have our normal exponential Integral, easy to calculate. We say that that's lambda over 2 times d squared, uh, d lambda squared of uh, 1 over, well, I'll actually plug in here. So e to the negative 2 lambda x over negative 2 lambda integrated or evaluated from 0 to infinity. And that's just going to be lambda over 2 times the second derivative with respect to lambda of 1 over 2 lambda. Now let's actually bring the 2 out front, and we'll just say lambda over 4. And we'll just do that derivative, that second derivative with respect to lambda of just 1 over lambda. Well, second derivative of lambda to the negative 1 is just 1 over um, or is, a, is 2 over lambda cubed. So when we actually plug that in, we're going to have lambda over 4 uh, times 2 over lambda cubed, and that is equal to 1 over 2 lambda squared. Pretty simple, just a substitution. So we do expectation value of x squared is equal to 1 over 2 lambda squared. Okay. Now part C, let's go back up to the top here. Part C asks us, find the standard deviation of x, sketch the graph of the wave function squared as a function of x, and mark the points uh, for the expectation value of x plus the standard deviation, and then also as we subtract the standard deviation to illustrate the sense in which sigma represents the spread of x. And then it asks, what is the probability that the particle would be found outside this range? Okay, so part C here, we know by definition that sigma is equal to the square root 
of the expectation value of x squared minus the expectation value of x quantity squared. Now when we actually plug that in, that's equal to the square root of 1 over 2 lambda squared, as we found right, right here. And then we are subtracting 0 squared from the expectation value of x. That equals 1 over square root of 2 times lambda. All right, so that's our final answer for the standard deviation sigma. And now we want to actually graph this. So again, just another quick uh, animation here to kind of illustrate what happens as we change some of these parameters around. So going back up to the wave function here, we have a few different uh, parameters that are changing here. So so essentially we see that as lambda increases, the amplitude of the graph increases in the middle there. And then we have a standard deviation uh, right here, the expectation value of x minus sigma, expectation value of x plus sigma. You can see that for low uh, values of lambda, the spread gets quite large, which makes sense because the standard deviation is inversely proportional to lambda. Okay, and then if you wanted to de just uh, draw this in a simpler diagram, um, just in solving the problem, really we could just throw that right here. Okay, and that, that kind of shows your spread. So now the next part asks, what's the probability that you're going to find the particle outside of that range? So let me just highlight quickly here. What's the probability that you're going to find the particle outside of this middle range? So what we're really doing is finding this probability and this probability and add them together. Okay, so that's just going to say the probability is equal to the integral from negative infinity to the expectation value of x minus sigma, which is really simple to see. We have negative infinity all the way out here, and we're just going up to that point right here. And then we're gonna do that integral of the wave function psi of xt squared dx. And we're gonna add the integral from expectation value of x plus sigma to infinity, expectation value of, uh, excuse me, um, of the wave function squared dx. Now we can pull the lambda from each of those wave function squareds out front to the very beginning of everything. That will be constant throughout. We're gonna have integral from negative infinity to negative one over square root of 2 times lambda e to the 2 lambda x dx plus integral 1 over square root of 2 lambda uh, to infinity e to the negative 2 lambda x dx. And that is positive for this portion and negative for this portion for the same uh, line of logic that we used previously that in these bounds of integration from negative infinity to negative um, 1 over square root of 2 lambda x, this absolute value of x is always going to be negative. So it's going to cancel out with that negative that was out front. We're going to be left with something positive, and then the opposite is true for the second case. Okay, and then we can say, okay, well, that's equal to lambda times, do these integrals, e to the 2 lambda x over 2 lambda, uh, bounds of integration, negative infinity, negative 1 over square root of 2 times lambda, minus e to the negative 2 lambda x over negative, uh, well, it should be plus, but we have negative 2 lambda in the bottom here, so that negative is going to go out front. So we'll just say minus that, 1 over square root of 2 lambda to infinity, those are our bounds, and when we actually plug that in, 
we have e to the negative 2 over square root of 2 uh, divided by 2 plus e to the negative 2 over square root of 2 divided by 2. Well, that's just equal to e to the negative square root of 2. Plug that in for your probability. That's equal to approximately 0 0.243. And so the probability that you're going to find that particle outside of this middle range, so in these yellow regions here, is about 25%, about 24%. And so that is how you can see the spread of the wave function um, squared over of that probability uh, by calculating sigma, and then also by calculating the probability. Um, we also see how to calculate the probability that the particle will be found in any particular range.